After decades of marriage, my husband's infidelity came to light. His partner was a woman much younger than me, in her twenties. When I confronted him, he mercilessly said, Divorce me for her. I'll give you custody of the kids. I was stunned, words failing me. Moreover, he had gotten his mistress pregnant. I discussed the situation with my daughters. Then, I decided to take a bold step based on a suggestion they made. Just wait. I'll give him a taste of his own medicine soon. My name is Nina, 47 years old. I married Jack, my age mate, at 25, and in the blink of an eye, 20 years passed. We have three daughters, the eldest is in college, and the other two are in high school. It's still a while before they become independent, but they're at an age where they can take care of themselves. With the kids less dependent, I immersed myself in my beloved career. I've been working for a major corporation since before my marriage and earn more than my husband. Plus, the house we live in was passed down to me by my parents. With no mortgage payments, we've been living comfortably. With our daughters grown, my husband and I found more time for ourselves. One evening, while sharing beers, he happily suggested. Hey, Nina, the kids don't need us as much. How about we go on a trip together after so long? Really? When was the last time we went on a trip, just the two of us? I owe you for all you do, and we both work hard, right? A little luxury won't hurt. Heh, right. The girls are old enough to handle the housework themselves. Yeah, that's a great idea. Now, let's plan the time off. Where do you want to go? Relaxing at a nice resort sounds nice. A resort, nice! He began planning the trip with a boyish excitement. Seeing him like this, I couldn't help but smile. I, too, started checking travel sites whenever I could, during breaks at work or on my commute. We narrowed down the destination, and the girls were informed about the trip. Him suggesting the trip was a joy in itself for me. A month passed since we talked about the trip. I was waiting for my husband to come home to finalize the plans. Usually, he's home by the time I get back. But not that day. He wasn't there when I arrived home, and the girls didn't know where he was either. He always informs me when he'll be late, so I started to worry. If there was still no contact after midnight, I'd call him. As I was thinking this, he finally returned past 11 p.m. Welcome back. I was worried, you were so late. I hurried to him, but he wore a somber look. What's wrong? Trouble at work? To my question, he slowly began. Nina, there's something I need to tell you. What is it? Why so formal? The truth is. I've been unfaithful. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I've been cheating with another woman. I was so shocked I couldn't find the words. Cheating? My husband? Confused, I barely managed to ask him back. What are you talking about? Cheating? You, of all people? I have been. It's been a year since we started our relationship. A year? You're kidding, right? You've never shown any sign of it. I've been desperately hiding it, meeting her after work when you're doing overtime, or pretending to work on weekends. No. That can't be. Not you. As if to calm me, he grabbed my shoulders and looked me straight in the eye before speaking again. I'm truly sorry. But there's no turning back now. No turning back? Stop joking. We've been together for 20 years. That's the situation. Please divorce me for her. Divorce? For her? What are you talking about? We were just planning a trip together. I'm really sorry. I couldn't comprehend what he was saying. It's as if my husband had been replaced by someone else. As I tearfully pressed for answers, he began to explain everything. According to him, the other woman was a junior employee at his company, a 20-year-old temp. He had become her mentor at work about a year ago, teaching her after hours and having coffee together during breaks. They started going out for meals and eventually became involved. She's very innocent and cute, and she can't manage without me.
but she's 27 years younger than you. Hearing him speak so casually about her charms made me feel like I had none. Then he dropped a bombshell. I said I want a divorce for her, right? The thing is, she seems to be pregnant. Pregnant? Yeah, so I want to take responsibility and marry her. Luckily, the kids are less dependent now. Wait a minute. That's irrelevant, isn't it? There are daughters. Don't worry, I'll give you custody. Huh? Despite discussing something so serious, he had a smirk on his face. Was he thinking that just giving me custody would make me agree? I felt insulted, and my sadness quickly turned to anger. Before I knew it, I was yelling louder than ever. Don't be ridiculous. This is too much. But there's nothing I can do. The new life coming is more important to me now. Then why did you suggest a trip together? I was looking forward to it. At that time, I had no idea she was pregnant. So if she wasn't pregnant, you were planning to keep cheating on me. Anyway, I'll bring her over tomorrow. Let's talk it out then. Saying this evasively, he pulled out a completed divorce form and quickly headed to the bathroom. What is this? He confesses to cheating out of the blue, and now she's pregnant? How much more can he mock me? I felt like a fool for having prepared dinner and waited for him. I was tormented by a whirlwind of emotions. However, no matter how angry I got, it wouldn't change the situation. Reluctantly, I decided to confront my husband's infidelity. The next day, true to his word, he brought his mistress. I asked my daughters to wait in their room and had my husband and his mistress sit on the sofa. The woman, introducing herself as Lisa, bowed to me as soon as she sat down. I'm truly sorry for what happened. Apologies don't help. My husband and I have three daughters, you know? I'm aware. But for the sake of the child in my womb, could you please divorce Jack? Huh? Why should I destroy my family for your child? Her blunt request for a divorce infuriated me. I snapped, don't be ridiculous. Just then, she dramatically covered her mouth. Ah. Watching her, my husband looked concerned. Hey, Lisa. Are you okay? Sorry, Jack. I feel a bit. Morning sickness, huh? Need to go to the bathroom? Thank you. Could you show me where it is? Of course. This way. My husband's chivalrous behavior was something I had never seen before. After she returned from the bathroom, he cautiously supported her. Lisa, don't push yourself, okay? Our baby is in there. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got scared when Nina yelled at me. Sorry, yeah. If only she had agreed to the divorce readily, none of this would have happened. No, it's okay. This is a trial we must overcome to be together. Like a scene from a movie, they smiled and held hands. At that moment, my feelings for my husband froze over. So, it's my fault for not agreeing to the divorce? What, am I to blame for this? After all, it's you who cheated. This is ridiculous. Fine, I'll give you your divorce. Finding the conversation absurd, I agreed to the divorce. I then kicked my husband and his mistress out of the house and locked the door. Hearing our voices, my daughters came out of the room. Mom, was that true? I nodded slightly to my eldest daughter's question. I couldn't hide it any longer. I called the girls to the living room and decided to tell them about their father's affair. So, that's why I'm divorcing your father. You'll need to decide who you want to stay with. In unison, my daughters said. Obviously, we're with you, Mom. Right? But it's boring if Dad gets off scot-free. Exactly. Let's get back at him. And his new wife. Immediately after, my daughters suggested a plan. They're my smart kids, indeed. Although surprised by their idea, I decided to go along with it and play our part. A few days later. I need to talk about the alimony. I said to my husband, inviting him over alone. I immediately started the conversation with my husband when he visited. After the divorce, I'll be claiming alimony. And about custody. I'll give it to you. 
My words left him wide-eyed in surprise. Then my daughters appeared. Seeing them, my husband quickly started speaking. Hey, you girls. It's better for you to live with your mother, right? Eh? Why? We're obviously coming with you. Isn't it our right to choose? You have a more stable income, after all. Wait, wait. Nina earns more than me. The daughters easily brushed off their father's attempts to convince them. It's fine. Just give us our usual allowance and we're good. Right. As long as the three of us sisters are together, that's all that matters. Exactly. You should feel honored we chose you. That's, well. My husband was bewildered but couldn't go against their wishes. He's always been weak against our daughter's assertiveness. Reluctantly, he agreed to take custody. Since the divorce was his fault, there would be no child support from me. I would only collect alimony from him and his mistress. The next day, I filed the divorce papers. I received $30,000 from my husband and $15,000 from his mistress as alimony, all paid in lump sum. The daughters would stay at my house on weekends, living with my husband and his mistress on other days. Their new home was a small apartment where his mistress lived. Living there with five people must have been cramped. But this was all part of the plan. Just wait and see. You'll regret betraying me and our daughters for your affair. Two months later. I was expecting something to happen, and sure enough, my ex-husband and Lisa came raging to my house. Hey! What's the deal with those girls? They're impossible to handle. We're at our limit. They complained, their faces red and breathing heavy. I calmly replied. Don't be rude. They're my proud daughters, all good girls. Nonsense. How are they good? They demand steak, complain about their allowance every single day. Yeah. And why do we have to pay for their school fees and textbooks? We never agreed to this. Well, that's only natural, isn't it? You two are their parents, after all. The house is too small. Living in a 1LDK with a family of five is unheard of. Right. I originally rented that place for myself. We're constantly getting complaints from neighbors, and the landlords asked us to leave. That's your own doing. Besides, the girls chose to stay with their father, so what can you do? Their faces soured, struggling for words. After a moment of silence, Jack sheepishly bowed his head. P please. Take them back. What did you say? I said take them back. We're about to have a baby. If we keep indulging the girl's whims, we won't be able to properly raise our own child. Huh? They're your children too, aren't they? Stop complaining. You, when did you become such a heartless person? You can't understand other people's feelings. You're the worst. Jack's face turned red with rage as he yelled. I sighed deeply and retorted with a sarcastic tone. Someone who can't understand others' feelings, the lowest of the low? Aren't you describing yourselves? Huh? Cheating, secretly fathering a child, and then asking for a divorce for your mistress? Who was it that betrayed us first with such despicable actions? That's. That's in the past. Don't bring up my past mistakes. It seemed he still didn't understand how selfish he was being, blaming me while being together with his mistress. I fiercely rebuked him. Enough already. It's in the past? Don't wrap things up so neatly by yourself. Do you have any idea how the girls and I felt? Betrayed unilaterally, and were supposed to be unaffected? And yet, all you do is act selfishly. I apologized for the affair, didn't I? Just take the girls back, please. Fine, I will. I don't want them with a scumbag like you. But in return, you'll be paying child support diligently. As their father, you have responsibilities until each of them becomes an independent adult. But I can't afford that with just my salary. Quiet. No more pathetic excuses. You got your mistress pregnant without even thinking. Now get out of here, 
and never show your face again. His face drained of color, and he collapsed on the spot. After hanging his head for a while, he muttered to Lisa, let's go. That's when Lisa, who had been silent until then, suddenly slapped him hard. Don't mess with me. I've even taken on debts to pay the settlement, and now you talk about child support? This is ridiculous. There's no point in lying anymore. What do you mean, Lisa? Lying about what? Aren't we going to raise the child in your belly together? There is no child. Wah. Wow. Her unexpected revelation brought time to a standstill. Flustered, he asked, no child? What about our baby? I lied about being pregnant. I just thought you were rich, so I wanted to marry you. What are you saying, Lisa? That's a lie, right? You boasted about this house, but it turned out to be your wife's. We don't get the house, we get billed for the settlement, and we're stuck with these troublesome kids. Marrying you brings me nothing but misery. I want a divorce now. That's, how could you? My ex-husband, tears in his eyes, clung to Lisa. Get off me. I'm leaving. She pushed him away and swiftly left the house. Jack, promptly dumped by his mistress, groveled before me. Please forgive me. Give me another chance. Despite his pleas, I of course refused and kicked him out, calling my daughters back immediately. Later, I regained full custody of my daughters and demanded child support from him. With his savings drained from the settlement payments, paying child support for three must have been tough. Moreover, his affair with Lisa and their quarrels were witnessed by co-workers, spreading quickly. Lisa's contract ended, and Jack was demoted. With a reduced salary and the burden of child support, he struggled just to make ends meet. Apparently, he's now barely able to afford proper meals and has become quite emaciated. When I told my daughters about this, they high-fived with beaming smiles. Our preemptive strike was a resounding success, and we celebrated together. Now, a new life for the four of us begins. Even without a father, I'll ensure my daughters grow into fine adults, upholding my responsibilities as a parent.